And it's over to you. Thank Perfect. you, Eileen. Hey, thank you so much. Well, it is a gorgeous morning. I'm so glad the Delta Breeze held up. So at least it's a nice, cool start. And you know what? It'll be in the 90s later today. If you get under one of these tents here, you'll be just fine. Well, obviously, uh, emergency services has been on the forefront of everyone's mind. I know we're enjoying the day today out here, but our friends in Napa right now are still picking up the pieces from the earthquake nearly two weeks ago. There's a lot of work to be done, and it really was, and I hate to use this term over and over, but is a wake-up call that all of us here in California, in Northern California, are susceptible to major natural disasters. It's only a matter of time before another quake hits. It's only a matter of time before the big flood comes through Sacramento. I know drought is on the forefront of our minds, but it really is just a matter of time before we get a big flood here again in the Sacramento region. Of course, drought still is something that concerns us. The wildfires, dozens of them this year, impacting thousands of people. So again, emergency preparedness is huge. It is key. And if you're out here with your family today, this is really the time to maybe go home, chat about it on the way back out of here from old Sacramento and say, what's our plan? Because nearly half or, or fewer of our families around Northern California don't have any kind of emergency preparedness plan. Where are you going to go? Who are you going to contact? What are you going to take with you? Where are you going to, uh, where are your belongings? Where are you, you know, all of those questions need to be answered of what your plan is should the big one hit, whether that be a flood, whether that be a natural disaster like a uh, wildfire or an earthquake, just like we saw nearly two weeks ago. So first up, I'd like to introduce Mark, who was sort of introduced before. <laughs> yes, the Governor's Office of Emergency Services Director. Love to introduce him, Mark Yojuchi, and here you go, Mark. Thanks, Eileen. Just stick these here. Well, good morning, everyone, and, and uh, uh, Eileen, thank you very much for hosting today, and thanks to all of you for coming out today and, and doing something for yourself that really is going to help when a crisis occurs. You know, we live in arguably the most beautiful, fantastic state in the United States, California. But that, yeah, let's hear it for California. Uh, we are lucky enough to live here, and we, we enjoy a great state, but also that comes with some risk. California is disaster prone. We all know, we've, we've, we've seen the wildfires. Uh, we, two weeks ago, we saw an earthquake in Napa, and we know that, that, that the scientists have told us that we're gonna see a larger earthquake and the bigger faults in the metropolitan areas. Certainly the Sacramento area is, is at risk of flood. And, um, and, and w of course, we're in a pretty major drought that's going on right now, and it's been going on, and we're all feeling that, each and every one of us in our homes. And I have to tell you that, you know, we are, we are just approaching the, the 20th and 25th year of the Northridge and Loma Prieta earthquakes, respectively. That, that's coming up this month, 20, 20, 25 years. And, you know, it's funny because you think, wow, you know, we haven't had an earthquake for 20 or 25 years, and, and then we just had the one in Napa. You never know. You never know when an earthquake's gonna hit. You know, we, 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 we focus on fires, we do have a lot of, of weather kind of situations, but you never know when the earthquake's gonna hit. So being prepared, it empowers you. Having a family plan empowers you. Knowing how to communicate with the members of your, your family and your friends, uh, knowing what to do when an earthquake hits, to duck, cover, and hold. Uh, how to turn your gas off, uh, how do you, how do you uh, get into the uh, emergency services system to be able to uh, get assistance when you, when you need it. And, and most importantly, understand that in a disaster, really how you act, how you are prepared, empowers you. Because really, it's not like you normally every day call 911 and you're going to get a lot of resources. In a big disaster, that may not come for a while, so being prepared for up to 72 hours is really critical. So today, today our effort here in this preparedness fair is to really partner with all of you, partner with all of our agencies that are here, both public and private, the utilities coming together. These are the same folks of people that respond, the public safety agencies that respond to come and help when an emergency disaster hits. We plan together, we train together, and, and so the idea is that it's seamless. But from the public standpoint, Really, you shouldn't care what patch or what color uniform. You just need to know that we're going to respond. But it can't be just a government solution. It has to be a public, private, non-governmental citizen solution. That's how we build resiliency and sustainability in our communities. The more you do for yourself and your family, the stronger you will be as a community. 
So today, I'm very, very happy to announce uh, that uh, Governor Brown uh, has uh, issued a proclamation, uh, which I would like to read to you all. Uh, Governor, Governor's proclamation says that um, uh, history shows that disasters often strike without warning and that preparedness on the part of individuals, businesses, and communities can do much to mitigate the devastating effects of such events. This year marks the 20th and 25th anniversaries of the Northridge and Loma Prieta earthquakes respectively, and in less than a week we will co commemorate the 13th annual 13th anniversary of the terrorist attacks that hit on September 11th. These historic disasters, as well as re the recent South Napa earthquake and the wildfires, flash floods, and the drought conditions we have experienced this year alone should serve as reminders to all of us that we must always be prepared. Beginning a decade ago, as part of an effort to encourage personal preparedness for emergencies, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, proclaimed September as National Preparedness Month. Since then, my agency, the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, uh, who works for Governor Brown, uh, other state agencies, many of that are here today, local agencies represented today, the business, and, uh, 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 business community and uh, utilities that are uh, represented today in California, have joined in the effort to promote personal, employee, and community preparedness by conducting preparedness fairs and other events during the month of September. So today, I, Governor Brown, urge all Californians to continue their vigilance and increase their effort to make our families, communities, state, and our nation prepared for future disasters. And anybody who would like to see this proclamation will be up here, but um, it's signed by the governor. So uh, from uh, the local level to all the way to the federal level uh, in your government, and I ask all of you, uh, be prepared, think about this, Take home all the information you learned today. Uh, engage it in your family discussions around the dinner table. Uh, make a plan. Uh, have a kit. And really be prepared. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark, so much. Uh, next up, we're going to hear from uh, PG&E, one of the marquee sponsors. Uh, one thing I did learn uh, when we had the Napa quake is our coverage on KCRA3 uh, quickly ramped up, and we were asking some of the viewers and people who were out there during the quake, what was the first thing you did when the quake happened? They said, well, I ran out with my cell phone. It's like, no, no. They, they didn't touch their gas. They didn't turn off the gas. They, they did so many steps that probably today you'll learn more about uh, steps you need to take if there is a big emergency like a quake. So I'd like to have up our PG&E Vice President Barry Anderson to give us a couple of comments this morning. Great. Hey Barry, you're right behind me. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Well, good morning everyone. We're really delighted here today to be part uh, not only of the sponsorship but also to have uh, many of our PG&E team here. We've got about a couple dozen people with a lot of different booths and activities and I encourage everyone here to visit those today and learn more about what you can do to protect your family and protect your safety after an earthquake or wildfire. Um, probably the timing of this couldn't be better. Two weeks, almost two weeks ago we had a 6.0 magnitude earthquake in Napa and we saw how important preparedness was from our company's perspective making sure that our employees are prepared on what to do, utilizing new technologies. You'll see a, a machine called the Picaro gas leak detection machine. That type of technology allows us to rapidly assess gas leaks, and it's something that we've only had in place for the last year and a half. Um, uh, another key area is how we practice and prepare with first responders. And we have real tight alignment over the past few years in regards to understanding what police and fire are going to do right after an event to make sure that our teams align with them. Our, our real goal is making sure the public's safe and that we restore our customers so communities can come back up and function. The, uh, the, the, the pieces out here we have today, we've got an electric demo and we've got a, a lineman back there that can walk you through those demos and explain electricity to you. So any question that you've ever had or were afraid to ask, uh, somebody from our electric team, we also have someone from our gas team to talk about that. You can understand how your gas meter works and how the riser connects. We also have a bucket truck back there with an FPL, uh, with a PG&E lineman 
that will give you some uh, real tips on down wires and also our mobile command vehicle that we use to when we arrive at an incident that we set up and coordinate an incident command post with the local first responders. One other area I want to mention is uh, hydro as well and we've got a booth for, for, for that too. So um, as Eileen and Mark have both mentioned, personal preparedness is so important. I encourage you to have a family plan, a communications plan. Just think about if we had an earthquake right now, you'd be concerned where your loved ones were. And you, so you've got to have that plan. You've got to be able to survive three to five days with the right medicines and waters. And it's so important. So I thank you for coming here. It's, all, it's not the plan, it's planning. And I look at everyone out here today as really planning. And that's what's most important. So get your plan together and stay safe. Thank you so much, Barry. Yeah, and of course, you see a lot of folks walking around with the orange buckets. Home Depot is here, one of the sponsors, too. <laughs> Come on up here. Larry Snyder with Home Depot. Thank you, Eileen. It's great to be out here today, and it's an honor for the Home Depot to be in partnership with the Governor's Office of Emergency Services to bring some additional awareness to both the drought, water conservation, and then also today some emergency preparedness things we can do in our homes to help us with disasters. We are participating in several events like this throughout the state this month. And within these events, the Home Depot has committed to give out 30,000 water conservation kits to the citizens of California. In these kits, um, in these kits, we have a water-saving showerhead for your bathroom, some aerators for your faucets to help you conserve water, some leak detection kits for your toilets, nozzles for your hoses, and uh, everybody's favorite, the iconic uh, orange Homer bucket to help you fill up with that shower water and water your plants with it so it doesn't go down the drain. Um, we have over a thousand of these kits over here today. Uh, to give out to you. And we also have a lot of great innovative uh, water conservation products that, that we have in the stores to just help all of us be able to conserve water as we try to weather this, this drought that we're dealing with. So I encourage you all to please come by, talk to some of our great associates we have out here today, pick up your uh, drought kit, and uh, let's just spend some time talking about what you guys can do in your homes to help conserve water. So thank you again. It's an honor for us to, uh, to, to be here. And Eileen, I, I have your kit here for you ready to go. Awesome, my two-year-old will love playing in this bucket <laughs> with very little water, <laughs> I promise you. Uh, another thing today, as you and your family walk around here, uh, there are a couple of many exhibits you should really hit. Obviously, one thing that really is going to be a big draw today is the simulation quake cottage. You can simulate a 6.0 Napa earthquake that we just had and see what it really felt like for them. And then more importantly, you can talk to your first responders. These are the people in your community that are going to help to save you and your family should a disaster disaster come our way. We have the DART uh, team out here. We have Safely Out, Sac Metro Fire, Sacramento County Sheriff's Department, Police Department. Um, I would really encourage you to talk to your first responders on, on how things work. They are your friends. They are there for your information here, and they can show you what a lot of this equipment will do uh, is the, if there is an emergency or if your family is in need of saving. I'd like to call up uh, the director, executive director for 911 for Kids, Elise Kim. She's going to have more on a special award today. Thank you so much, Eileen. Let me just get organized here. Yes, um, for those of you, just don't be misled that it says for kids because 911 for kids is for all people of all ages. And um, it is the official public education and caller training program um, for the United States, Canada, and the Grand Caymans. And why those countries? Because those are all countries that use 911 as their universal emergency response number. And our mission is to educate and empower youth with a systematic knowledge to make critical uh, decisions when faced with an emergency or disaster situation.
And just so you know, 911 is the foundation, foundational education, and what we need to know when we're dealing with any kind of emergency or disaster situation. And the key message points that we teach is when and when not to call, how to dial, and what to say to the dispatchers. And seemingly that would be very simple, but in California alone, um, there are over, I believe, Director, is over 25 million calls that go to over 450 911 centers throughout the 58 counties. And over 50% of those are not 911 emergencies. So just remember, boys and girls, you got to have to teach the adults how to use 911, right? Is um, you only call when you have an immediate emergency and you need law enforcement, fire, or emergency medical response. And it's now my pleasure to reintroduce our director of the Office of Emergency Services. Mark, is, could you help me with this? Mark Ducci. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Elise. Okay, you wanna grab that stuff there? Oh, thanks, thank you. Okay, well, um, again, good morning, everyone. And uh, it's really exciting. Uh, um, you know, Cal OES, the Office of Emergency Services, oversees the, the 911 communications network in California. Uh, as Elise said, there are over 450 911 centers that uh, handle over 25 million or so calls of, of all different sorts. And, and as we all know, uh, uh, being able to, uh, with confidence and reliability, dial those three numbers and get, get uh, uh, somebody on the other side of the, the phone that knows what to do and, and can guide you through it is absolutely critical uh, when you're in an emergency situation. So we are very uh, honored at OES to uh, host this particular event, which, which all, we believe brings great uh, attention to the 911 system and the incredible what, selfless, really in most cases, really hardworking, behind the scenes heroes that answer our 911 calls each and every day. These are unsung heroes, folks. These are, we don't normally, normally know about all the great work when you see police and fire and EMS responding to the scene, there is somebody on the other side of their radio networks guiding them to the scene, giving them information, while at the same time being on the phone with the people who are actually having the emergency. They are truly the bridge, that conduit that comes together that makes a crisis situation a successful outcome. So they are very, very critical. So today we are going to honor uh, an incredible dispatch hero, a 911 dispatch hero. Uh, this individual uh, both worked bravely and calmly together in the face of emergency crisis situations and ultimately helped save the lives uh, of individuals during the call. So um, uh, who, a couple things before we're going to, I'm going to actually let you listen to the call because it's very interesting. Uh, and to help me do that, I want to introduce and take the privilege of introducing uh, the official 911 mascot because he helps me get through all of this. Uh, uh, he's, he's our wireless, 911 wireless ambassador. Uh, please join me in welcoming Red E. Fox. Right here. Right here, buddy. How you doing? All right. There he is. All right. So make sure you take a picture with, with Red E. Fox because uh, he is ready to go. Okay. So here is the, um, here's the situation of uh, why this award's being presented today. 15-year-old um, Luke Owen called 911 to report a burglary in progress at his residence. He and a 12-year-old sister were the only ones in the home at the time of the incident. His calm demeanor and description of the incident gave the dispatcher the necessary information to pass along to patrol deputies. The deputies arrived within three minutes, but the suspects had fled the scenes. There is, there is no doubt that Luke's quick action and calm demeanor brought this incident to a swift resolution without the loss of property or injury to him and his sister. And if I could, could we listen to the call? Did the engineer put that on? Hi, um, there's people at our house and it's me and my sister and we're home alone. And they're kicking on the doors and windows trying to get in. All right, what's the address? Uh, what was it, Bailey? 7109 Regard Way. Do you know these people? No. Okay, can you see what they look like? Uh, I would, but I don't want to let them know we're here. Okay. What did you hear? Uh, they're kicking and banging on the doors. Uh, they haven't said anything. Okay. Front door, back door? Front door. 
Okay. Can you tell how many? Uh, two of them. Okay. You don't know if they're males or females or anything? Two males. Okay. Do you think you're trying to kick it in? Yes. Okay, all that time that that discussion is going on, the dispatcher is typing in the computer, which is going to patrol officers that are responding to the scene, getting that critical information, that link between what's happening on the scene at the incident at the time from a very, arguably, very, very calm and collected young man being able to share information at a time that he was probably pretty scared. So today, um, are we going to do the young man? No. So today, we are going to uh, provide an award to Carla Lewis. Carla is the dispatcher that took that call. Uh, and Carla is the dispatcher that takes many calls. She's 34 years of experience. Her loyalty and her desire to help people of Sacramento in their time of need truly qualifies her for this year's 911 Hero Award. With the Sacramento County Sheriff's 911 Center, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 911 Dispatcher Hero, Carla Lewis from the Sheriff's Department. Congratulations. So uh, we're going to have Director Gerdalucci present the Medal of Honor right now to Carla. And Director, if you could please present the Commendation Award here to Carla also. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm going to turn it back over to, uh, I, I know, I'm sorry, I have to pay for work. It's okay, Mark. Um, so just kind of a rundown of the rest of the day. The day is great if you're here with your family. Uh, folks from UC Davis are here. They're going to be spread. They have a, a nice spread there to show you kind of the California plants that you really should be planting in your yard to face this drought. Uh, the rescue dogs are here. The CARTA, the CA Rescue Dogs Association, with their search and rescue performances. They do a scent demo. It's great. Uh, also, life jacket competition. The kids who can put on a life jacket the fastest wins a life jacket. And, uh, you know, the kids can learn how to use a fire extinguisher. Again, PG&E is here also with many displays, and, and their experts are here as well. And so we'd love for you to kind of stick around as much as you can today, learn as much as you can about first response and all of the things going on in California uh, that we need to be aware of from the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. And right now, actually, down at the river, we'd love for you to see, uh, they are doing uh, the SAC Sheriff's Office, along with the DART team, the dive team, will be uh, putting on a, a quite a display. The boat and swift water rescue team will be doing rescue demos on the river right now. So we'd love for you to join us down by the river and have a wonderful day. Would you like to say anything else? Well, I certainly wanted to thank you, Eileen. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I'm about to get the hook. I am. Not these guys. I am. Uh, but anyway, we wanted to thank you for coming out here as well. Uh, yeah, and coming up here really in just a few minutes, uh, like she said, the Sac County Sheriff's uh, Drowning Accident Rescue Team. They're going to be right down here by the river in a van down by the river. Remember that old bit? All right. But anyway, uh, seriously, we wanted to thank everyone for being here, especially all the first responders. Let's give a round of applause for all these folks up here, please. They're, what they do for our community in California is just amazing. And uh, so thank you to the first responders. Thank you to PG&E for helping sponsor this and Home Depot and to all our volunteers. Thank you for uh, coming out here and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. And remember, prepare. All right, thank you. <laughs>